This is a psychopathic murderer. He stabbed a syringe with ecstasy into the victim's neck and shoulder. Then he found seven sharp stones. He cut his stomach open and stuffed them into his belly. The next day, the police found the word wolf written in bright red on the tree next to the body. The coroner examined the body and said the victim woke up after the effects of that drug. He died from the pain of the stone stuffed into his belly. The cruelty didn't stop there. The naked woman was tied up. She was thrown into the incinerator without mercy. The killer's face was unmoved. The body was stuffed into a mall oven. When the switch was flipped, a zombie then rolled down the field. The evidence left behind is still the wolf left by the murderer. The murderer said it was a game of wolf killing. As early as the day before the murder, the murderer Xiao Wu went to the police station to give himself up, claiming that he had killed someone. The police went to investigate, but the victim was standing in front of them unarmed. They thought they were tricked and filed a false report. Then they let him go, even though he kept emphasizing that he had killed someone. No one took his words seriously anymore. It was only when the body was found the next day that they realized they had made a big mistake. The victim's name was Xiao Zhang, the vice president of the mental hospital. Jack, the head of the crime unit, led a team to the hospital to investigate. There was a room full of graffiti in the hospital that was confined and depressing. The drawings came from Xiao Yu, a psychiatric patient. She had an argument with Xiao Zhang over the graffiti a long time ago. She escaped from the hospital two days before the incident. Sounds suspicious. Jack took all of Xiao Yu's paintings back to investigate, but no matter how he thought about it, but he couldn't connect the graffiti to the case. At that moment, someone helped him find a breakthrough, and that person is his son who also suffers from autism. He is a close-minded person. He likes to express himself through drawing. One day he was doodling on the wall. He saw a sticker pressed under the bench. Tried to pull it out but couldn't. <laughs> So he almost killed his mother. Jack came home one day and found the evidence of the graffiti his son had brought home. Put together a complete picture. The mystery was solved. The picture on it was the fairy tale of the little sheep killing the wolf. Jack was inspired, spending a lot of time and effort putting together the rest of the dual paper into several patterns. All of them are fairy tales. Each story has a killing method. According to the patterns, Jack's colleagues also found new clues. It turned out that Xiao Wu and Xiao Yu both came from the same orphanage. One had a skin disease and the other was mentally ill. They were often bullied and the first of victims happened to be one of the abusers. They thought fairy tales were fake. Naturally, they also despise people who like fairy tales. The two men who had suffered so much finally couldn't take it anymore. They made their own plastic boat. They escaped from this infernal hell. Jack found Xiao Wu's address. There were many fairy tale books there. Soon the third murder took place. Brutality and blood spewed everywhere. If this was a premeditated payoff, then Xiao Wu's next target was a female lawyer who had been one of the abusers. Jack came to the door to warn her, but she kicked him out. They had no choice but to stay downstairs, but eventually a wolf appeared on the lawyer's window. Jack rushed over with his men, but it was too late. The female lawyer has been killed. The revenge targets were all killed, but the game wasn't over yet. Jack's men were all unconscious in the car. His wife and children were all taken away. Shall we let Jack come along? When they arrived at the abandoned building, the doors and windows were sealed. Jack was looking for a breakthrough when a bottle of water was thrown from above. Xiao Wu announced, Their game has just begun. All the passages downstairs are blocked. The only way up is to use the thorny wire. Jack had no choice. He had to grab it with his bare hands and climb up step by step. The blood and flesh is very dangerous. It took him a lot of effort to climb into the building. The second level Xiao Wu showed his for colleagues. Jack was asked to eat the apple in the iron ring. If he didn't eat or hesitate, he would be thrown from a height. Jack had no choice but to bite the apple immediately. But after just one bite, he became dizzy and vomited. You can imagine that it was drugged with poisoned apples. As promised, Xiao would drop Jack, unbind him and let him go immediately to get help. The third level is a multiple choice question. Xiao Wu has captured Jack's wife and children. Give him three minutes to realize. Either go to the switch and save his family or go downstairs to retrieve the bottle of water. Unlock the toxicity of his body. It is up to Jack to choose whether to save his family or save himself. The countdown begins. Time was running out. Jack didn't hesitate. The first to find the switch to save his family regardless of his own safety. But the poison in his body made Jack confused and dazed. But he still dared to find and press the switch at the last second. Successfully saved his wife and children. Strangely enough, his poison did not kick in. Xiao Wu left at the side. It turns out that when they were kids, they had received favors from Jack. They killed him for revenge. The kidnapping of his family and colleagues was for revenge. They wanted Jack to be a hero for once. They also wanted to use their own death to fulfill his dream of a promotion and a raise. In the end, Xiao Wu ignited the gasoline. The flames and fire surrounded them. Not only their lives, also took away their sins and evil deeds. Well, that's it for today's video. See you in the next video.